namhlanje sube sibhekene nomkhakha wezomthetho so this is what Varashela was cement and Olombe. As a refonia, Oguze Asazi Segabans in Gepiznisi like him. So until I reach my goal, there's nothing that will stop me for as long as I'm alive and able. Sipine Sishangabezan and Melvin Naidu, Opeta Ipiznis, Laba Meli, Elise Houtin. I mean, that's proven a challenge, proven to be a challenge from day one. Still a challenge three years on. <laughs> Would I trust a student who comes straight out of school? Not really. Provided if the person is competent, the person has the self-confidence to defend me, I will. Absolutely no, because I believe lawyers are liars. But no, not just on their own. <laughs> in Africa, Guna Malunga, Amabili, Wabameli, Abasibin to San and Isn't Lobonto Boyim Teto, Besaruba Kona, Abameli, Abasibin to San and Isn't Gandolo, Lumkaka, O Petwe at Tennis X, year nineteen seventy nine, Leo Y X number fifty three, Yaga nineteen seventy nine. If we learn law and the lawyers learn the right system, they would impact people's lives and make a difference in our country. Sungula went down to Yeningi, second to say Isbalo Sabameli Abansundu, Kakulugas Guaban to Bismami. I would encourage my younger sisters, actually, and my younger brothers to actually consider this industry because, um, yeah, it is growing. <laughs> Abameli abakeke shiwe benga sebenza guzi nkampani uzo mteto ezi nkulu no mabezi talele ezabo fusibe kwazi ukubambisana na abanyi abaguona lo mkaka. I'm not quite familiar with the whole procedures as to how to start a law firm. Ezi kabazo kusungu la nkampani uzo mteto eningizi maafrika itinga loku. Ubutela inwadi e law society ezo ba iskwini sego soguti ungu meli opalisiwe. Uhambisa inwadi ya sepa Noma is that mende, as a sepange, as so be screen segi so so good to une account at him begile. Utualisa is tell us a form, Uguze Utole is to figure the safety fund, Kuvunyelwe if form a guu yung mobu pela. Often people would prefer well-established and experienced firms to handle their legal matters, yet they are not prepared to pay huge fees. business My name is Samantha Molomba. Um, I was born in Bulawayo, and that's where I was raised. Life growing up was very, very, quite intense, but also quite nice. I'm the first child of three children. I have a little sister and a little brother, and I'm also then the first grandchild from nine grandchildren. She was just a big sister to us, as in like, I would go to her to talk about stuff, and she was always there for me. That's how she was. She's a people's person, so you can talk to her about anything. After high school, um, I, I, I think I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then the law came up. Um, so in pursuing where to study the law, and then dad was like, oh, wow, you want to study law? I just got an acceptance from the UCT. And then he was like, why don't you just then take it up? And that's kind of how the South Africa journey started. But it was really many, many years ago. For me, a good time is spending time at home, either with my husband, mostly with him, or with cousins or aunts. So we do like dinners and fries um, and that sort of thing. But I also love to travel. So any opportunity we have, we travel either around South Africa or actually leave the country. Um, and just see new places, meet new people, experience different cultures, new food and that sort of thing.
We've arrived at a place called Rockfit, it's in Cromerville, and this is where I'm going to attempt to go wall climbing for the very first time. So yeah, we're gonna do it together, have lots of fun. Let's see how it goes. I don't know, I'm not nervous, a little bit, and I'm more excited, so yeah, I'm okay. How are you? I'm excited, I can't wait. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna assist you guys, because seeing that this is your first time, for your carabiner. Okay, we make sure you're locked. Mm -hmm. And your job is to use the grips on the wall. Okay, only use your hands and feet. Do not hold the rope with your hands. Okay. And when you get to the top, touch the red sling. And then you tell me when you're ready to come down. She's very strong. She can handle anything. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty strong right now, so horrible time to ask me about weaknesses. Um, I'm very impatient and I struggle a bit with time management. I know I have a lot more, but right now those are the only ones that I can think of. But yeah. Go, go. Nice, Gaga. Yay! business If you focus on immigration issues, Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, cross-border transactions. business if you South Africa, or any business yes, South Africa business outside. It's mostly been in Southern Africa. So Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Zanzibar, the Bangladesh and understand him South Africa So immigration in up. Sometimes there'll be a client as our Tiba Bani clients, Mshaba Bani employees, as in permits, and maybe a project that they have to bring them in the country for. So can get work permits. A quest is small businesses. As a small business myself, it's very demanding and abana access to illegal services and like corner they can't really afford it because basa card. So what I've done is ndibenzele e packages. It is about offering e basic services like understanding your contracts about draft dial, your contracts about for money before they sign. It's, yeah, we have to do the background analytics for the bigger picture because we want to use that information. Then we can help you with like the resolution process where we can mediate on your okay. behalf. But we can't mediate if we've advised you. And then get the last area is yeah. CSI. Oh, um, right. Yes, the CSI business because the passionate thing about best fathers, then the servants for women and children. So what I've done is e corporates. I'm sure you guys are going to they're obliged to go fuck a percentage yeah. of your profits zabo into the community. So we're going to middleman between imaliabo yeah. and actually making sure it recipients are for man. Long as we're not doing a cool way for money, don't. Because we're going to have to make cash. No matter you handle your kid. Unfortunately, Kala, which is what I've seen from my experience, in Mali, I cook consistent. Sometimes in Bekona, sometimes in Abikon. So the problem is being a Funuksa and Sum to employment contract, didn't manage any stress about this month and Patalong and some Patalaganjan loomed. So in the better than running a strategy, so in the networking relationships with Ezini firms, as in a similar work, plus in the overwhelmed, I pass it on and then ban make a fee for like that referral. And I also have someone in the Dange ad. Mendimbiza on days when it's very hectic. I'm tato ya shinja nizi ndoze shinja yes katine spilag zon. Gakul. Kona gana lo mteto musha ye lo su kishu o wabona umakul mangali zi ndoze o immigration. Gakul. Wena gu afekta anja ni business lako lo mteto. E home affairs is cash in e agent. Mm. So e applications are basas phone but not directly. We have to go through the agent. But o agent agas phone o phone is client. So what's happening is that e clients 
can still come as a consultant, so I prepare the process your corner, do the documents, so I advise, so I and then on the day of submission, the client will be corner get pa. I think we're going fingerprints in the jail, but by interviewing the client face to face. What are you doing with my client? What are you doing with your client? Because you go with Sammy, you're in Congo, and you're going to go with your client. Bahan, bendwa tola nge word of mouth. Mangu tu kwenye some seven to four in company, o kanyu mundo, aku azuke ati hai kafuni mwe tonga lendo phone la i company e tuangu NNA ba phone la ndi bangi te kanchal. But ndi sa work out i marketing campaigns onzo ba mshamba bini gele na mgu internet, send zama ne social networks andiko good ge up. But ndi azama because I've realized that it's easy information is spread and jay naturally by itself. Iskata kus manager kanja nuguti ge. No mumi lego ma. Fez isso então zanga hambi pichele ele já colo e business na lali me gosta de business então nós já cobre as ciências o manager já não gosta não while I'm there then the ends are waiting there's nani like the admin the email my email the phone lá bando so I try o go multitask as well um dinga é mochi clash yeah I guess it's 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 o colo mengo vou me fez e tal a namorar mas não é que bom é young que processa ciências a galera mas lá no problem mas também fez you keep me company na lali de lepa Yes, I still need a process in the process of the process of the process of the process of the the process of 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 the process and then so how I get in and we want to bang in Zani and then so explain and we'll cuzzle and we'll party and then we can come out again. All right, yeah. Okay. Big doors as well. Bang in the masam bagay. Okay, so Samantha, you boni le yonke le process la bang a party from Amalai ni to yonke nte nzaga la step by step. Checka is in Juglin, I'm a document to verify, but check what is in to say, Buile, the corner, the ready. That is, you know what, a lot of work. And today, Pelas is a much for cards. Yes, yes. Because they're not going to be able to do it, actually. Yeah. yeah. I've learned a lot about your industry and what you do as well. Oh, man, JG, I'm saying it's Batia when you're not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not Firstly, you're on your own. You, uh, you are the sole owner of the business. You are the marketer. You are the legal person. You, you know, you do everything. How do you manage that? Yes. Tipinde si wamgen. Usama nta umpati we NNA ya tennis. Usa studio se tunjenga manji. Utuwa kisana no peeps. Kuguti yi ne mkukuze lai. Uma uza gweza ma business. Bapinde kefuti ba tingi teno tabalo guti business lagi. Ulubona likula liba gupige. Mafusha ninji. Bapinde futi ba kukusane. Nanga ma challenges. Ape gana nao. Samantha, welcome once again to Making Moves. Thank you. Thanks for making time to come share your story. Thank you for having me. What is the long term vision? The long-term vision is to have uh, an empire, yes, dare I use that word, that will house a group of passionate individuals with a legal background, because that's primarily the business. However, with the goal of touching as many lives as possible and crossing many African borders. So the theme will be the law. However, we aim to empower using the law. So yeah, I just see this building in my head, it's white and yeah, has NNA outside, and that's where we're gonna run the ship from. So why are you going to succeed? Why am I going to succeed? Um, because I believe it's where I'm meant to be. I believe in it's my calling. I believe it's the space that God wants me to be. And it's actually something that's proven itself over time. I've tried the corporate route and it worked for some time. And after a while, I just felt that I wasn't where I should have been. And lots of doors even closed because I just kept trying to open and get into a space that I primarily believe I wasn't supposed to be in. So I'm going to succeed firstly because I think it's where I'm meant to be. But also I think I'm very hardworking and I've had to overcome 
lots of circumstances to get to where I am. So it's made me a lot more resilient to the challenges that I face on a day-to-day -day basis running a business. So until I reach my goal, there's nothing that'll stop me for as long as I'm alive and able. Firstly, you're on your own. You, you are the sole owner of the business, you are the marketer, you are the legal person, you, you, know, you do everything. How do you manage that? Um, it's, it's a little bit challenging from time to time, but I've had to come up with a few strategies. Um, so when it comes to the actual provision of the legal services, I have a team of networking partners um, around South Africa, also across other African countries. So it helps in the sense of delivery. So when I need to deliver certain work, then I pull on them um, as an extra resource. But then recently I have added someone onto the team, which is so exciting, first employee. Mm -hmm. So she's helping a lot with the admin, which was taking so much of my time. But luckily she's also like a law graduate and it's the path that she wants to follow. So she's also getting her hands dirty with the legal side of things. Are you profitable? At the moment, no. I'm barely breaking even. Um, however, I've realized over the last couple of months that what's been happening is that I'll get a contract, say, with a wonderful institution, mm. which I've been trying to get my foot into. However, from the onset, more often than not, it's not exactly what I'm looking for in terms of how much I'm going to make out of it. So I've had to somewhat think outside the box and see right now, is it really about the money or where I'm at in the business and seeing the overall strategy and where it's going to take me to. So I've had to balance the, the financial benefit right now um, versus the long-term benefit of just getting my hands dirty, gaining more experience and exposure, building the networks and that sort of thing. So the money right now isn't where I want it to be, but I believe I'm making strides towards that. But let's talk about the small business specific challenges. Ooh. Okay, small businesses don't want to pay. That's the greatest challenge that I've found. And for some of them, I can understand, you know, I, I am sitting here telling you that sometimes the finances don't look so good. So when you sit and weigh up what you need to pay for, you probably put the legal skills at the end and you think, oh, I can Google, you know, I can get some templates and do it myself, which for most people is a huge mistake because there's lots of fine print and legalese that sometimes people just don't understand. So I can understand not wanting to pay if you can't afford it, but there are businesses who are making money, however, just don't really prioritize the need for legal services. And then they only come to you when they need you and they're in trouble, so you do damage control. So the biggest challenge are just the payments and chasing them. And sometimes I spend so much time chasing them that it costs me a lot more than what I'm trying to get back from them. So there I'm restructuring a bit. It's just not really working out as I planned. So I'm trying to instill more preventative measures than damage control. And, and just the challenges that you face as a small business. Yeah, I think for me the biggest one was time management at first. Um, I've had to significantly shift. You know you go to like workshops and you speak to people who are really successful and they tell you they start their day at five or four. I just think that was so ridiculous and I was just like, no way, I'm sleeping. But now you almost just can't help it. Your brain is just always active. You're always busy. You're thinking what you need to do, what haven't you done. So I've had to start my day much, much earlier and fit in exercise, fit in family time, fit in a little bit of me time, which hasn't happened lately, and then also plan and be as strategic as possible as to how to fulfill my daily tasks. So time management was a big one, but I'm, I'm getting to grips with that, and that's quite exciting because I can actually feel the difference. I'm running things much smoother. Um, the other challenge that I'm facing right now is I need to grow my team because the work is growing. But even though the work is growing, the finances aren't yet consistent, and stable enough for me to see that I'll give someone a contract of employment that I actually can honor. And I don't want to ever be faced with, you know, sorry, I have to let you go. So I'm still holding back a little bit on that um, and seeing how to go about it. So I'm considering funding, you know, and other channels, but I've kind of been functioning debt free and I've been a little bit hesitant to go that route. But I mean, to get to the next level, I suppose it's something I'll have to seriously consider. Because we're all about improving your business and supporting entrepreneurs, I'm going to send you off for a coaching session where you'll chat to a coach, talk about your business, and maybe you know, get a few insights on how you can be better as an entrepreneur. And then we'll chat afterwards and you can tell me how the coaching session has shifted your thinking. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Samantha is now going to meet with advocate Charles Magaiza from Purpose Clinic for a coaching session on how to deal with some of the challenges affecting her business. We'll catch up with them later for feedback. For the rest of us, let's check out our weekly wisdom nugget. Business is a, is a different kind of animals. 
you have to do things yourself. You have to put an effort behind it. You have to, sp to spend a sleepless night doing all the things, all the planning, all the kind of work. Don't just come in the morning and come out and, and knock off in the afternoon. You have to work and use your brains. But again, you must still improve your studies. The space in which you're operating, you must always make sure that you've got enough knowledge to understand that kind of business. Please just elaborate on some of the services that you guys are talking about here. On my side, basically, is to protect the inventions of people that's more patents. Also, provide advisory on uh, the inventions, how they'll be commercialized. There's not many people who can actually do IP law. Tina <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Melvin Naidu. Um, I live here in Windywood in uh, Esprit Estate. I'm originally from Pretoria, from Lodia. Uh, moved here a couple years ago, and yeah, this is where I, this is where I live. This is uh, Odilia Pillay. This is my girlfriend. Hi. I've known Melvin all my life, basically. Um, our families grew up um, with each other, well, opposite each other. And um, yeah, as a result, we grew up as friends and uh, I think in his first year, that's when we actually started dating, first year of varsity. Growing up, um, the people that I was always most close to was, were, were my parents and my, my brothers. And even now, till today, we're still extremely close. You know, myself and my younger brother, we're very close in age. We're like a year and a couple months apart. So we were constantly like, you know, we would fight with each other often. This is my good buddy, Ji Neowang. We used to work together at Evershed's about five years ago at my previous law firm. Um, he's a very dependable person. He's a good friend. Um, he cares about his friends. Um, he's just easy to be around, very funny, um, easy to talk to, very well read. Um, so it's, yeah, it's easy to be friends with Marvin. I once ran out of petrol. I was, it's in the heyday of us doing articles and I was stuck somewhere and I, it was like, knocking off time, everyone had gone home and I called Melvin and he came like, without question, no, no stories, he just was there. So he's very dependable as a person. The hardest times I had growing up was, like I said, you know, we came here quite early before the group areas act had been completely abolished. So a lot of like non-whites weren't really very embraced in this type of neighborhood. So. That's out, right? I think one of the earliest incidents of racism that I ever faced was when um, myself and my younger brother, we were playing outside. We were about five or six years. I was about six, he was probably about five. We were playing pop-ups outside and, you know, just making like a whole bunch of noise. And then the next door neighbor started like, you know, giving us a hard time about it. I mean, it wasn't very loud noise or whatever it was. So, We've, you know, he's, then he got into a massive fight with my mother and he told us that we should like move out of this place, we don't belong here and that type of thing. So the cops um, came and, you know, they didn't really do much about it. It was just weird because we didn't really know, we were so young, we didn't really have this concept of things. And I guess after that I always made a promise to myself that I'd never treat any group of people the same without first knowing who they were. So, yeah, I mean, that really changed my perceptions about people. Gentlemen, 
Are you man? Good good. Good good. Mr. Sia. Oh, but how are you doing? Right, in your sauce. You calling me Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you know you run the business, but I also heard about him as well. Could you just do a quick introduction? Okay. Okay, go for it, sir. Okay, my name is Tuli Mbata. Yeah. I've joined the firm as an, a director also in the firm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, oh, it's been a month now since I've joined the firm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You joining as a director. How did that come about? Basically, we were working together. I, had, I was in another firm, yeah. and then we were working together in association. Mm -hmm. And then we decided we can collaborate and actually use uh, our skills together. Look, uh, yeah, on that point, I mean, the whole, the whole vision that we had when we started the practice was to try to create, you know, as a diverse um, set of skill sets as possible. Because I have uh, a technical and a legal background, so I, my focus is more on intellectual property, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got the corporate and litigation expertise. Yeah, um, and there's not many people who can actually do IP law. Please just elaborate on some of the services that you guys are talking about here. On my side, basically, is to protect the inventions of people that small patents, also provide advisory on uh, the inventions, how they'll be commercialized, and also other aspects of intellectual property, provide advice on trademarks, copyright, know-how, how to basically maximize your copyright, mm -hmm. how to maximize your trademark, and so that you can get enough royalties, startup companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be busy, like. Marvin, where are we up to with you? Because clients, you guys are busy as always. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll start off at Houghton and then we'll take it from there. Alrighty. Okay. Next stop, I'll give you time to get ready. I'll be outside. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thanks. You have more questions for Sky Attack. Check out, I'll be outside. Okay, perfect. My client, uh, Cesa Cremona, is one of my longest running clients, one of my best clients as well. Um, you know, I'm involved in doing various types of litigation for him and uh, commercial acquisitions, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, odds and ends as well. It throws me a few smaller instructions, but yeah, that's primarily it. Yeah. Commercial litigation and acquisition. What type of business are you in, sir, if you don't mind me asking? Because I'm hearing litigation, I'm hearing commercial, this and that. We're, we're in the food manufacturing business. Mm -hmm. We do cheese manufacture. Wow at the moment and um, we're, we're busy expanding our operations to, to Natal mm -hmm. and um, that's how we met, we met Melvin. I needed yeah. someone to look over some of my commercial, commercial matters and my contracts and he's been with us ever since. And how long ago was that? I mean, it sounds like you guys were young years back. It's, it's about three years now. It was, it was about early 2011. I was looking for some new blood. I was looking for something new, a new way of thinking. And yeah. I had gone through about 15 lawyers until I had met Melvin. And then now, like I said, he really, really made a good impression the first time. Yeah. And his work has been impeccable. And since then, I've, I've been with him. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cheza, for your time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Pleasure meeting you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Cheers, Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. My name is Michelle Thatcher. Uh, the business is called PGR5 Investments. Um, Melvin was introduced to me through a business broker, highly recommended. So essentially it was word of mouth. He concluded the sale of a partnership agreement where we bought our partners out from India and he facilitated that whole process. His service was excellent. He was very thorough. He was very involved. This, as the saying goes, you get what you pay for, but not in Melvin's case because the cost was very reasonable, yet his level of professionalism didn't compromise relative to the cost, so his cost was excellent. The type of industry you're in, I, I would presume that you would get a client when you have to deal with something, then they'll pay you out money, then what happens? Do you go find another client? How long do you keep your clients? Do you have clients that pay you retainers? Or what's the deal with the client base that you guys have? It depends on which department you're actually dealing with. Okay. okay. Now, when you're dealing with, with, with the people that I deal with, we don't do the whole high client turnover thing. Okay. Because any company, no matter how big or small they are, they'll always need an auditor and they'll always need a lawyer. They may not always use one, but they will always need one. You'll need somebody to send out letters of demand to recover money for you. As you get bigger, you'll need to negotiate deals, put in labor contracts, that sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, generally speaking, when you're dealing with commercial work, they tend to 
stick with you for many, many years and they give you lots of instructions. Mm. On the divorce and criminal side, like you said, you then have to market every single month. So how much would your service go for if I came through here and said, please look at this contract, you know, how do you charge me? Do you charge me per page, per hour? What do you work with? Yeah, I'm not really sure if I can really tell you what my, what my rate is. I can, I can. Look, give me the plus minus <laughs> figures. <laughs> Look, it's, it's um, for the directors, we all charge approximately 1,250 X, X fat per hour. Mm. But the way it works is that uh, we divide our hour into units of 10. So if I look at your contract for five minutes, I'm only going to charge you 125 rand. Well, okay. You see what I'm saying? If I look okay. at it for three hours, then I'm actually going to charge you 3,750 rand or whatever it is. But it depends on how lengthy it is and whatever it is. Please show me around from where you work from. Okay. All right. So this is your office? Yeah, this is my office. This is where I you know, obviously get all my work done. This is our library. Uh, this is the most important tools an attorney can have. Is um, it? Our civil practice, practice. Civil practice, magistrate's court, this high court rules, all of our substantive law textbooks. Um, uh, yeah. We sit and read them every day, as you can see. You gotta always have something to read. Yeah. And there's always gotta be paperwork as well. <laughs> okay. All righty, thank you very much for your time. Learned a lot about your industry. Thank Have you. a good day. Eh? You too. So, What's your success rate with public service clients? It's zero <laughs> at this stage. It is often said that businesses are most likely to encounter numerous losses in their early stages. You will find that your prices are set too high for clients or they are too low and clients do not take you seriously. Melvin, welcome to the Lion's Den where we have the conversations, sometimes easy, sometimes difficult about business, but at the end of the day, the objective is to improve your business. Why did you start Naidu Rich in Attorneys? I'm previously from a, from a big sort of Santa law firm background, and I felt that I wasn't getting enough hands-on time with my matters. So I left, took a year off, went to South Korea, tried to figure my life out. When I came back, you know, I made the decision that if I'm going to come back to this profession, I want to be able to do it properly, I want to be able to do it right, and I want to manage my matters fully without the supervision of a director or whatever it is, because, you know, oftentimes because of the size of what we were doing, uh, I wouldn't be fully involved in, in, in those types of things. So I wanted to feel what it's like to be a lawyer as opposed to a glorified messenger and that sort of thing. Could you really do admin in the big law firms? Mm, well, you know, a lot of what I used to do involved more making copies and driving around and that sort of thing. So I wanted to feel like what it really meant and truly meant to be an attorney. Jeez, bro, that's a very expensive <laughs> messenger. So how's that working out? Yeah, well, look, I mean, it's been working out great for us. Um, look, it was very difficult on the start. Um, I was on my own. I took a shared office somewhere, you know, cheapest rent I could possibly get and still have the infrastructure, you know, for a law firm, which would require a receptionist, it requires somebody there to receive documents for you and that type of thing, because one of my primary specialties is litigation. Does being a brilliant attorney make you a good entrepreneur? No, I mean, those things aren't mutually exclusive. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that being a good attorney means having the knowledge when it comes to the law and how to get your clients out of problems or mitigate their risks or whatever that involves. Whereas being a good businessman involves sitting with auditors, mitigating your tax liability, employing people, managing staff, that sort of thing, managing your overheads, maximizing your output. You know, those are considerations that you have to have. And not everybody has that sort of either intuition or the training or whatever it is to, to do both, to be a good businessman and be a good lawyer and, you know, drive the growth in your, in your business. Yeah. Who's your typical client now and who's your ideal client? Okay. When it concerns typical clients, it depends on which director you're talking about. Now, if you're looking at um, myself, I deal with mid-level type of businesses, businesses which turn over anything from a million to 100 million rand a year. 
Um, they obviously have ongoing litigation matters. They've got uh, commercial agreements and acquisition documents which need to be drafted. So what I do is I nurture those relationships and continue doing work for those for those people and try to try not to have them release me for whatever reason. Those clients require they come from like your middle LSMs that sort of thing. Here and there you'll have a corporate executive or whatever. It is. Sometimes it's a offload from one of my clients who needs a divorce or whatever it is, and we'll do that. But that requires constant turnover from these types of LSMs. And, and that's, again, where you, your internet marketing is, is, is strong and it's fruitful because you're bringing in those types of clients. You're bringing in clients from the public, from uh, yeah, you so know, those types of public private clients, clients. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. from the public. The main thing here is we want to deal with work in the public sector. That's where we want to see ourselves. I've dealt with commercial clients my entire career and it's all good protecting them from being sued and trying to get them more money or whatever the situation is. But we want to deal with matters which actually have a sort of effect on this economy, if you understand what I'm saying. We want to deal with, with uh, the types of matters where you, you're dealing with rural development projects and that type of thing. You know, we, we apply for those types of, uh, that type of work. What's your success rate with public service clients? It's zero <laughs> at this stage. I mean, how many have you pitched and, and okay, yeah. you've won none? How, how many well, have you pitched? Look, I mean, we've, got, uh, we've gotten onto supply databases, but in terms of actually getting um, work from those supply databases or um, panels, we haven't had any luck. And in terms, of getting, um, yeah, in terms of getting work from the supply databases, we're, we're not seeing any success. Why, 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 why do you think that is? Look, I think part of our problem is, is that we... We do apply, and then even with the supply data databases, we never really phone or whatever it is to follow up and that type of thing. We don't have relationships with people there, and you know that obviously inhibits you from 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 getting those those instructions. Um, uh, you know, but it's also you don't want to cross those bounds because you don't want to create the impression that you're trying to give people kickbacks for work and that type of thing. So we we try to take a more passive role. We don't want to be seen as doing anything that's unethical. Again. Uh, but with the strict regulations of marketing that the law society imposes on us, we, we have to be a little bit more cautious as to how we approach clients, what would be considered as touting or unethical marketing practices, that sort of thing. Also, public sector, they're always on the lookout for, for you know, people who may, may be taking bribes or that type of thing. What do you guys have to do differently in order to grow the business? Not that there's anything wrong with the business, mm -hmm. but you want to grow. What do you have to do differently? I don't know. I think the marketing aspect has got to be is, is the biggest thing. I mean, we're going on courses now. We're trying to get back out there again, being more active. But you know, you get that one instruction, and then you have this the setback again of how do you balance the marketing with making sure that your clients are getting the services that they need. So that that I mean, that's proven a challenge, proven, proven to be a challenge from day one. It's still a challenge three years on. You know what I mean, bro? I have no doubt that you're going to achieve all those things that you're setting out and this business will be able to look after yourself and your kids and grow into everything that you want it to be. One of the things we do here at Making Moves is that we hook our entrepreneurs up with a coach, typically from the same industry. And I'm going to send you off for your coaching session and then I'll chat to you afterwards and find out what insights you gleaned from it. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Melvin will meet up with Weili Jabusihu, who's the senior legal advisor at Transnet for a coaching session. Welcome back. Samantha is now back with Advocate Charles from their coaching session. Sam, you look happy. I am, and part relieved as well. Um, it was a very insightful and interesting session. And it was interesting to have a chat with someone who's not only in the legal business, legal space, but also focuses on the issues that I'm focusing on. So I got better understanding and better clarity within those areas. So Charles, what are the burning issues, the things that you picked up that need to be addressed immediately? The issue of funding is always going to be critical for her for her to be able to grow that business to the next level. Yeah, she's afraid mm -hmm. of debt. <laughs> At some point, you have to commit so that you go to the next level. Otherwise, you will continue playing on the same uh, platform and never be able to go up. And any other things that came up? Networking. She needs to network more to get her business out there so that people know what she's doing and know where she is so that they can give you more business. You don't strike me as a social animal, so do you prefer to just kind of 
it's amazing that that actually comes out because I'm not a social animal, but I've made huge strides because um, mm -hmm. I realized I had to get out there and network quite a bit. So there's lots of seminars, conventions, and talks mm -hmm. and that sort of thing where I have actually made a few connections. I just probably need to do it a little bit more and then mm -hmm. I suppose more in the specific areas that I'm playing in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not really an out and about person, but I'm stretching myself, which has been both interesting and challenging at times. You don't think perhaps, you know, one of the things that, that might be helpful, I find that with entrepreneurs that are not naturally sociable, get out there, do the lunches and f functions, is, you know, getting an opportunity and creating platforms to speak at various seminars, mm -hmm. to share your, 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 your knowledge and your headspace mm -hmm. and start to be seen as a bit of an authority mm -hmm. in, in immigration law. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that is a great idea and actually one of the other challenges that I had um, with the small businesses specifically is that I, I was chasing them a little too much. So in my quest to kind of shift that a little bit, I've targeted the incubators and at one of the incubators they actually want me to facilitate a course for small businesses within the legal issues that they need to look at. So that's actually a start towards what you're saying and hopefully it will just kind of grow from there. Yeah, because I mean, socializing mm. and networking mm. isn't just about attending functions. Mm. It could mm. also be speaking mm. at, at functions. Yeah. Um, and you seem quite confident, so maybe speaking to women. And yeah. there are a lot mm. of young women out there that, that need to be inspired. Yeah. And that I think could learn from your story and how you've taken adversity and turned it into a business. And then immediate steps. Now that the show is done, what are you going to do differently in the next few weeks and months? Um, I think the first one is I need to, I just need to go back to the drawing board and actually make my business plan a living document. There's been a lot of changes from when I first put things down together and I just need to reconceptualize and focus in on the CSI space a bit more. Then I need to come up with the marketing strategy. I just need to market myself better. So I'm developing the website. Currently it's a landing page. Mm -hmm. So I have it as a fully functional website with say four or five pages. And then once I have my branding more in a compact package, it's then easier to approach the funders. So those are the two focus areas right now. The sort out the branding um, and then approach the funders. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much. Samantha, for sharing your story. Charles, for sharing your expertise you. and giving us your time. Thank you both very much. Thank, thank you for you. having us. After the break, we catch up with Melvin to get feedback from his coaching session. We're now joined in the studio with Melvin Naidu together with his lovely coach, Wayne Jabusihu, to tell us how their coaching session went. Willie, did I pronounce your surname correctly? Yes, you did. Thank I did. Yes, you did. Okay, cool. Thank you. I had to work really hard on that. So, what did you pick up when you looked at Melvin's business? Melvin and I actually had a good session. He's got a good head um, on his shoulders and he's doing quite well in business. His main struggle doesn't seem to be in the legal area. Um, that's his main area and he's doing well there. Um, what I picked up is that he's struggling with marketing. He's trying to take his business into a different type of market to get a different type of clientele and he seems to be struggling a little bit in growing his business. Should he be focusing on public sector clients? Is that a space that he's going to be successful in or should he continue pushing commercial work uh, as one side of the business and then kind of more of the individual work like we said the family law the mm. you know divorces etc etc uh, you know yeah. is public service the, the the way for him to go definitely i think any entrepreneur wants to expand and grow to be as big as possible um, the public sector is booming right now especially in especially in the legal field um, there's so much going on across our country in the infrastructure space mining um, you definitely want to tap into that type of work because as well that's the money that's the type of work that pays the fees um, you don't want to be confound to the small matters that give you minimal amounts of money. You do ultimately want the big transaction. And I do think that he is wise in trying to spread his wings that far out. Yeah. What have you learned, or rather, you know, what insights did you glean from, from the coaching session? Look, um, as what he said, you know, it's all about tapping into that market, the market where um, you know, where we had our focus. Um, she's given us a better indication as to how to tap into that market and how to develop ourselves in that market. So, 
uh, you know, and, and, and obtain work from that market. So I can see a clearer path to obtaining that work now than at the prior to prior to the show. Well, you just high level. Uh, yeah. What's some of the advice you gave in terms of you know being more successful in the public sector? Um, most public sectors, or let me say parastatals, already have in-house legal, legal advisors. That's mainly what I do. He needs to develop relationships with the in-house legal advisors because they are the starting point of where he's going to get his work from. They are the people that give you the instructions. I advise him on, firstly, the importance of getting onto panels. He needs to get onto as many panels as possible. We need people that are going to be quick on the ball people that can run with our matters and give us good results. Um, the last thing um, he wants to do is to be able to make it onto the panel and we give him an instruction and he's not able to perform. So he's been in the business for about three years and, 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 and I, I do promote that he wants to get bigger. But at the same time, I did advise that work up on your speciality, on your skills, your knowledge, what you, what you know, build on it. Because when you do get onto the panels, it's so easy to get blacklisted. You get one instruction from a parastatal. Uh, if you can't perform, you get blacklisted. So you want to be ready by the time you get there. But the biggest thing for him is to be at the face of the people that can give the instructions. And right now, he's not meeting with those people. He's meeting with the wrong people that can't get him there. So you're going to hook him up? I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I love the relationships mm. that form on this couch. Yeah. Mm. And people actually continue their conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, businesses are changed here. Correct. Guys, thank you for, for giving us time. I know you bill by the hour, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. And all the best to you, Melvin. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. I've had an awesome time with our entrepreneurs. This episode has been particularly educational for me. I even learned some legal jargon. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Take care. Until next week, have a fantastic week. SABC One, Making Moves, Zanzi for sure. My experience on Making Moves was very insightful. Um, it was very interesting and it provided me with some clarity with regards to where I am in the business, where I am personally and what I need to do. And it was also quite nice to be part of a show called Making Moves because it actually did make me feel like, hey, I'm making some sort of move. So it was lovely, thank you. Um, one of the biggest lessons that I'm taking home with me is that, um, you know, the steps that I need to effectively make my business more successful, particularly in approaching the type of clients and getting the type of clients that I want to get.